Hey guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're over on the YouTube account and we are looking at the Grand Hunt. That is right guys, the final version of the Grand Hunt is up. Before we get in it, I'm going to go through the beacons that I'm utilizing for the Grand Hunt. So we are doing Support Warrior Tank and I'm going to show you the build of the heroes. In addition guys, we are doing Unforeseen Power. Now looking here, Allied Celestials and Hydrogen Heroes fall below 25%. Energy recovery is there. We're using a pretty heavy Celestial Hypogen team within here. Um, looking at Fearsome Alliance, we have Light Bears, which of course the Awakened version of Belinda, and we do have Maulers. We have Brutus in there, we have Entendre in there, a couple other heroes that are gonna benefit greatly from that. Um, and then looking at Badge Addiction, you get 6% normal attack for every badge. Now we know all five heroes are carrying badges, so that is gonna be a really, really big buff. Energy transfer is one of the questionable ones. Um, with the cost, it, it's okay at 300. Um, I think there are some teams that are going to benefit from it, from the crowd control. So when they get crowd control, you can actually get some of the energy back that you're taking from the enemy team, which again, there are a couple teams that can really benefit from the build. But these are the temporal beacons that I'm going with. So let's go ahead, guys. We're going to hop into the grand hunt. I'm going to run through the formation that we're going to choose. So I'm going to set everything up and then we'll check it out. All right, guys, so I got all the teams. I'm going to run through the heroes that I'm using, also the badges that we're running, the pets that we're using as well. So looking at this team, guys, we have a star and we have Mishka. Um, we are running Tamaris, we're running Frampton, and we are running Queen. Now, the big thing with this, guys, is when you look at the heroes that we actually have, they are going to keep everyone grouped together for one reason and one reason only. It is up to a star to rain damage on this entire team, which is exactly what Little Peanut is going to do. She is going to be the primary damage dealer within this formation. Even though she is support, having all of these heroes literally stacked together, Queen will keep them together, Tamaris will keep them together, um, Frampton and Mishka will keep all of these enemies together, allowing a star again to do an incredible amount of damage. Now running through the badges, guys, you can see hatchets through the first four. Then we have the revitalizing er um, herbs right here on the bottom in Queen because again, she has the shielding aspect in there, which is really good. But when she heals, they are gonna get some energy regeneration. Healing, of course, with Queen, um, even where a lot of players don't realize it, she does heal. And then we are running Talisman in here. For team number two, it is probably the biggest team I've ever seen. Literally, we have um, Kinesa and Rook that is falling in line almost with Brutus and Anasta. Very, very tough combination. Joan of Arc is in here. And then, of course, the mitigation factor that we're seeing from Aziz. So similar to the very first team. Now, this one, I'm running the Rock Lizard. Best in slot here is the Deer. If you have the Deer leveled up, usually about level 15. Um, 15 to 18 is where you want to have the Deer. So I was thinking of putting the Rock in here. Or I might actually just do my Lizard, my Dragon, because um, Blade Ridge I have built up quite a bit, already at level 10. Now this is going to be another team, guys, that is going to stack all of these heroes together. Um, Kinesa and Rook is going to pull them together. Brutus is going to pull them together. Aziz, of course, is going to do the Ground Burn um, and also going to provide a lot of energy. Now some players that don't have Kinesa and Rook, a lot of players have subbed in um, have subbed in Scrag within here again to kind of get into that invade team. And then of course, Joan is gonna drop the stanchion over here. Looking at our badges, hatchet, hatchet. Again, the herbs, hatchet, hatchet. So you can see guys, through all three iterations of the Grand Hunt, it has been the hatchet for pretty much every single team. Now looking at the third team, this is the OG original Taylene. Um, in combination with Orthos. Now, we only have one target in here, which is one of the big things, guys. So, Halos is going to buff up Taylene. Mortis is going to buff up Taylene. We have Rowan in here for some buffs, some energy, and also um, so, some big energy buffs out of there. We have the Phantasmoth, which is, of course, going to buff up the highest hero, which has to be Taylene, guys. So, essentially, in this one with Orthos ults, Taylene is still going to have the ability to move, allowing her to do damage over here to Sophia while that ability is going on. Now here we do have the piercing ammo, um, revitalizing herb, herb, we have the hatchet, and then the other new one, guys, is the recharge crystal. When they, they get a shield to an ally, now we know Halos does a lot of shielding in formations, guys, which is really the reason why we have this. And then the Phantasmoth up here. Now looking at our fourth one, we are running the Awakened version of Belinda. You might ask yourself, wait a minute, we put zero into the mage tree. That is right, guys. Awakened version of Belinda is so strong. 
You do not have to have anything in that mage tree because it is not actually the physical damage that she does um, that does an incredible amount of damage in here while it does help. It is the burning effect on the heroes that is going to burn down Almas, um, like the little piece of wood that he is, but they are going to catch him on fire and burn him right down. Of course, we have the Awakened version of Belinda. We have Vithiel in here. You could sub in Estrilda within this formation, still works very well. But ultimately, guys, Vithiel does a considerable amount of damage. We have Rosaline, who is following Belinda. Soros is in here for damage and also for the healing aspect, guys. When he stacks all five of his stacks, he will do some definitely some good healing. And then you want Rain for the shielding and the energy effect. Um, plus 20 signature item with that three of nine furniture for the damage amplification in this formation. Looking through our badges again, hatchet, hatchet. Here we do have the railing horn, which of course is going to increase the damage. Um, vitalizing herb and then the restorative crystal above there. Final team, which is of course the boss team. Um, we are running the Entendre Grez. This is the team that has been prevalent for every single iteration of this. Has been Entendre, guys. Entendre we have built up, I believe, E68 at this point. So she is built out quite a bit. Um, we also do have Palmer in here. We have Solus, and I do have the twins. Looking again at Hatchet Hatchet in here, running the Spurring Cloak to buff Magical Pierce and Physical Pierce, um, depending which one they utilize on both of these heroes, as well as Palmer, guys. We do also have the herbs on there. Now, one thing that a lot of players have noted is when it comes to the twins, guys, I do not have the plus 30 um, signature item on there. I, I know it is a miss at this point. We are running the owl in this formation, and I think I have three attempts left. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do my three attempts. I'm not going to use any diamonds at this time, hoping we can score a little bit better with um, having that awakened version of Belinda built. I think it's going to make a big difference, guys. So let's see what we can do. And again, this is kind of the, the best in slot team for the warrior spec. Um, there are a couple guys that we've seen over on um, that were actually over on Reddit that utilize the mage comps. So again, a little bit of a different comps. We'll see what comes in of this or what actually comes out of this. You can see we're doing around 200. I think the the best battle we did was 251. I think it was 251. Um, billion damage in there so yep higher highest session 251 top two percent but right now guys doing okay with the grand hunt and the rewards looking at the leaderboard um i would love to get some stargazer cards out of here if we could get in here to actually get those time emblems or possibly we tried to get in and squeeze in that season three frame last time we did it unfortunately we did not but this time it might be a little bit different because we have that awakened version of belinda and if you look, guys, they're at 300 billion. I feel like if I built out Tamaris a little bit more, um, even there, guys, Tamaris doing some pretty solid damage. But look at Peanut right here, guys. I do not have Peanut built out enough. Now in here, Brutus, of course, we do have built out quite a bit. Kinesa and Rook would help 57 billion from the original version of Taylene. Then 55 billion in there from Belinda. And the final one, guys, doing almost 44 billion damage in there from Entendre. Still just an absolute monster, monster team that they're doing in there. So I want to see my 251 as actually right there. So again, 34 billion right here. My little level nine pet. It's funny when I look at other players and they're level 27, level 36, have just all these absolute monster pets. But even here, guys, Tamaris could do a lot more damage in this formation if I did have um, him built out quite a bit. Even here, 30 billion, pretty good. I know I need the plus 60 engraving on Anasta. Um, would also help with Kinesa and Rook and a couple other heroes. Now here, Taylene, of course, doing a lot of damage in this formation. Again, built her out considerably. Could add two more stars on there to really bring up that damage, but we're gonna have to wait and see. 45 billion from Belinda. Now compared to what we were doing in the other team comps, that is literally night and day, guys doing a lot more damage and then of course 44 almost 45 billion there from Entendre even having that level 9 owl definitely have some time guys now one of the big things is we still have 12 days left of this that is right guys you have 12 days left to build your beacons that is the reason why I usually do not put these out until it gets much closer to the end 
because you still have a considerable amount of time. Um, also, in addition, we are getting a new um, Awakened Hero that is going to be dropping on Tuesday, which means the new Awakened Hero is going to be available to see um, if it is going to be a hero that's going to be utilized within this iteration of the Grand Hunt. I don't know at this point if it is going to be. But all right, guys, so that'll do it for the video for today. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.